NFL, got hit a few times as well. Four-time Pro Bowler, our friend Michael Vick, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. By the way, watching Alex Smith, I was t a nervous wreck watching Alex <laughs> Smith. When you were watching Alex, wh 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 how are you feeling, Michael? You know, Alex is a good friend of mine, so, you know, just my heart was with him. But as, as excited as I was to see him out in the field, I also wanted him to protect himself and just get through the game. You know, when you're coming back from an injury like that, it's all about just getting hit for the first time, getting a feel for the game again, getting that floor of the game, and, and just trying to, you know, gel with your teammates and, and figure out what the game is really all about again. Because, you know, he's two years removed. Uh, from playing his last game. So, you know, things have changed a little bit, but I know he's a smart guy. He's paid attention to, you know, how the game has is, is, is transpired. But at the same time, getting that first hit and knocking off the cobwebs is something I know that he was excited about. So Russell Wilson is the best closer in this league, and I don't know what it is, Michael, but some guys get tight late in games. Some guys get loose late in games. What do you think it is about Russell that he didn't even play well last night? He struggled the whole game. Yeah. And then there's a minute and a half left, and he's absolutely brilliant. What is it about his makeup that makes it work? Well, the fact that he was able to fight through the elements, a wet ball, um, you know, raining all night, uh, that, that was one thing, and that was, that was key to be able to handle that. Uh, was was uh, something special within itself. But, you know, Russell's going down as one of the greatest of all time, man. And he just got ice water in his veins. Nothing seems to phase him. He believes in himself. And you can almost look at, at his eyes and just his, his mannerisms throughout the game and know if he's going to be off or on that night. And 90% and of the time, he's on. Like, he's, he's just one of the greatest, one of the best to ever do it. And I admire him so much. Uh, you know, if I... If my son grew up and played quarterback, you know, I'm, I'm going to make sure that he watched a lot of Russell Wilson films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's something about Russell, his conviction. He's not afraid to fail. They're just certain. Right. He's got just some, there's just some bedrock quality to him that he believes in himself. Yeah. His, you know, it's his, maybe it's his religious background. It gives him some certainty in his life. He's not, he's very, he calls yeah. it being neutral. He doesn't get high. He doesn't get low. And I love yeah. Brady, but Brady can yell and scream and you just don't see it from Russell. It's a, it's a great innate quality he has. Now, the Dak Prescott situation, uh, as somebody who's played in this game, and um, do you think it hurts Dak going forward as the Cowboy quarterback? Do you think they'll franchise him again? What do you think happens next year for Dak? You know, I, I think Jerry Jones, he honors Dak and, and what Dak has stood for over the last four to five years. It, it's been nonstop for Dak ever since he came out of college and just being thrust into the lineup. Uh, you know, having to, um, you know, be the predecessor for Tony Romo was not an easy task. America's team and, you know, everything that comes along with that, uh, he's handled it extremely well. And, you know, sometimes positive, sometimes negative press has been surrounding him. But Dak has been one of the guys who has rose to the occasion. I think we all love him for that and we respect him for that. And obviously his teammates does as well. So I think moving forward, um, Jerry Jones will pay it for with the deck. It might not be the most lucrative deal, but it'll be something respective and, and, and uh, you know, just, you know, for everything that Dak has stood for and how hard he's worked, man, I think he deserves another, you know, three or four years to show, you know, that he's the, you know, the Cowboys franchise quarterback for the next, you know, up and coming years. Um, you know, we, we said Andy Dalton is, is efficient. That I, I don't think he's Dak, but he's efficient. Um, can they... Could they still win a division with Andy Dalton? Absolutely. I've always been a big fan of Andy Dalton. I thought he was one of the guys, even in Cincinnati, when he didn't have the most talent, he made the most of what he had. And uh, one of my former coaches, James Irvin, worked with him uh, throughout the course of his career early and uh, just had a lot of praise and a lot of great things to say about him. And, and, and it showed up. It showed up on the field when he had weapons out there. He yeah. was able to, you know, win games. And I think he's an efficient quarterback and, Certainly, Jerry Jones is patting himself on the back for this move, and I'm glad that they made this move so that the Cowboys just don't tank. Uh, because when you don't have a good a good backup quarterback, you know it it becomes dismal for the entire team, and and guys just 
you know, they, they, they start to give up and feel like the season is a wash. And that's not the case here. Still a lot to fight for. NFC East wide open like we talk about. And uh, I can't wait to see what Andy Dalton's going to do filling in for Dak. Yeah, I mean, Washington, New York are in rebuilds. Philadelphia is not a lot of dynamic playmakers there. So I, I think Andy Dalton can make I, – I, I don't think they'll be quite as mobile at quarterback, but this is a wide receiver-driven yeah. franchise right now anyway. So yesterday, it was, it was Jimmy Garoppolo was coming off a little bit of an ankle injury, and Mike, he was awful. Uh, it was yeah. – I mean, it was – he threw into a cover two one time, and I, that's like a high school mistake um is it the injury i mean g give me your thoughts on what happened because it was hard to watch yeah i wa watched the game and it it's certainly the injury you, you can see jimmy g trying to compensate and, and make certain throws and it is his base just not there he one thing about an ankle injury um you, you just lose a lot of power in your lower body um and you got to be able to you know, step into throws and not be worried about, you know, if that ankle is going to get rolled up again because it's something that be, is, is on your conscience consistently. You know, when I had my ankle injury and coming back, the only thing I didn't want to do was get it rolled up on again. So it was kind of like altering, uh, you know, my throwing motion and now I'm a little out of sync in terms of my base. And, and that those are things that has to happen on a throw like that. If you don't have your base up under you, the ball sail on you and you just got to be nice and compact in the pocket and confident. And uh, it, it certainly showed. And the Miami Dolphins defense, they knew that. They knew he wasn't 100%. He was probably 80 to 85%. And that's just not good enough at the quarterback position. Maybe if it was an upper body injury, a rib, or a shoulder injury, he could have he could have made it through. But certainly not, not the lower body. It's just a totally different animal when you're dealing with that. Uh, Michael Vick joining us. For the record, um, I get analytics, but I do think all sports – are best served when you listen to all the analytics, but there's still moments where I'm just going to lean on my alpha males. So I did right. not like, and I, you, uh, you tell me, I did not like the Vikings going for it last night because my takeaway was I know who the other quarterback is, and Russell Wilson, I've seen him do this. They went for it on fourth and one and a half and didn't get it. If they kick a field goal, they're up by eight. The worst they can do is overtime. That's the worst they can do. If you're a quarterback, you probably fight to go for it, but what would you make of the call by Minnesota? Uh, I would have had a long talk with my coach um, before this call was made, and if we had a timeout, I probably would have called timeout to just talk it over, just to reassure him, you know, if we kick this field goal, then they got to get a touchdown and a two-point conversion in, in, in a difficult situation, you know, with the elements and, um, just how well we played throughout the game, I feel like, you know, the Vikings had some momentum. I would have kicked the field goal, and I would have made Russ drive the length of the field in those elements, have to score a touchdown and to get a two-point and get a two-point conversion, um, which is sometimes not ideal and easy to do. And those are the type of decisions that get coaches fired. Yeah. Because now you go from, you know, I think you're one and four now, when you could easily been two and three. It makes a big difference for the morale of the team. And when you're a coach, you got to think about the team overall. And I understand being aggressive, you know, and it's a time and a place for that. But, you know, on the road, you know, in Seattle, facing Russell Wilson, you just don't make that decision right then and there. You kick the field goal and, let, and, and show your defense that you believe in them. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because the Bears won in your division on Thursday night. Green Bay is on fire. So to your point, like, I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, my division keeps hey. winning. I uh, met right. yeah and 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 so you know I I am not a guy that doubts play calling at all but I didn't like plus wet field wet ball you, a running back can have it you can be open cut back and fall yeah. I, I, I to your point and, I didn't and, like and it. you see they had to make some miraculous plays just to get down the field after they got the ball on what the you know four yard line and went 96 yards I mean it's amazing man Russ is amazing good stuff Michael appreciate you stopping by thanks for having me uh, we're going to have to readjust how we think about LeBron and athletes in their prime. And the Cleveland Browns are 4-1. Four 4-1. And one. Four and one. Baker in my face. I'll address that coming up. When you want a 12-ounce ribeye, you don't have to, you know, buy the entire cow. When you want to fly, you don't have to buy the plane or the entire row. Then why are you paying for unlimited data for your cell phone when you're only using 2 gigs? 
That's how the big carriers hook you, the AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobiles. Charge you obscene monthly fees for data you'll never need and perks you'll never use. It's why you need to switch to Pure Talk USA. Only charges you for the data you need. Right now, you get unlimited talk and unlimited text from Pure Talk USA and two gigs of data for just 20 bucks a month. The average person will save $400 a year. Unlimited talk, unlimited text, plus two gigs of data, all for 20 bucks a month from your cell phone. Don't change your phone or your number. All you have to do, dial pound 250 and say Colin Coward. Dial pound 250 and say Colin Coward. That alone will save you 50% off your first month. Pure Talk USA.